Meet Barry, stuck in a rut. Barry was stuck, he knew it. Every day was the same. Wake up, drag himself out of bed, commute, coffee, spreadsheets, more coffee, more spreadsheets, commute, sleep, repeat. He was a cog in the machine, a nameless, faceless drone in a sea of cubicles. His job was about as exciting as watching paint dry. Actually, that might be more exciting, he mused. At least you could pick the color. He longed for something more, something to break the monotony, something, anything. Every morning, Barry would arrive at the office to the same dreary routine. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, casting a sterile glow over the rows of identical desks. The air was thick with the smell of stale coffee and unfulfilled dreams. Barry would slump into his chair, the cheap fabric groaning in protest, and stare at his computer screen, a sense of dread washing over him. His days were a blur of spreadsheets, emails, and pointless meetings. He would spend hours on end inputting data, his fingers flying across the keyboard with the mechanical precision of a robot. The numbers swam before his eyes, a meaningless jumble of figures that held no significance for him. He felt like a hamster on a wheel, running and running but going nowhere. The only bright spot in Barry's day was his lunch break. He would escape the confines of the office and head to the park across the street. There. Amidst the trees and the fresh air, he could forget about the spreadsheets and the emails, if only for a little while. He would sit on a bench and watch the children play, their laughter a stark contrast to the oppressive silence of his workplace. One particularly monotonous afternoon, as Barry was wrestling with a particularly convoluted spreadsheet, he had an epiphany. He realized that he was surrounded by opportunities for humor the very things he found so tedious and frustrating could be transformed into sources of amusement. He just had to change his perspective. Barry's epiphany was like a light bulb going off in his head. He looked at his spreadsheet, usually a source of frustration, and saw a piano keyboard. Okay, not quite, but the rows and columns suddenly seemed full of musical potential. He started tapping out rhythms on his keyboard, the click-clack of the keys transforming into a bizarre percussion solo. His colleagues, initially startled by the uncharacteristic sounds coming from Barry's cubicle, cautiously approached, drawn in by the infectious rhythm. Soon they were clapping along, their faces transforming from expressions of boredom to amusement. Barry, emboldened by their reaction, started humming along to his keyboard concerto. Words spread like wildfire through the office grapevine. The normally quiet, reserved Barry was creating music out of spreadsheets. People stopped by his cubicle not to complain about the copier or gossip about the boss, but to witness this bizarre yet strangely captivating performance. Barry, once invisible, was now the center of attention, his cubicle a stage for his unconventional symphony. The atmosphere in the office shifted. The air, once heavy with boredom, was now charged with a sense of playfulness and anticipation. People started finding humor in the mundane. The water cooler became a hub for impromptu stand-up routines. The office printer, once a source of frustration, was now the subject of witty haiku. Barry, the unlikely maestro of mirth, had sparked a revolution. One day, a co-worker decided to record Barry's spreadsheet symphony. It was too good not to share. Within hours, the video was making the rounds on the office email chain, then it hit social media. Accountant turned spreadsheet into symphony, the headlines screamed, Barry's inbox exploded. Interview requests poured in from local news stations, then national morning shows, then, was that Ellen? The video went viral, garnering millions of views. People were captivated by Barry's quirky humor and unexpected musical talent. He became an overnight sensation. His story resonating with millions of people stuck in the daily grind, yearning for a little bit of joy in their lives. Barry was invited to perform his spreadsheet symphony on national television. He was flown to New York City, put up in a fancy hotel, and whisked away to the studio in a limousine. He even had his own dressing room, complete with a bowl of green M and M's, his favorite. Life was moving at a dizzying pace, a far cry from his monotonous existence just a few weeks earlier. The lights dimmed, the band struck up an anticipatory chord, and Barry took center stage. He looked out at the audience, a sea of faces illuminated by the stage lights, and felt a surge of adrenaline. This was it, this was his moment. He took a deep breath, cracked his knuckles, and launched into his spreadsheet symphony, his fingers dancing across the keyboard with newfound confidence and flair. Section 5. 
spreading laughter, the power of humor in the workplace. As Barry's fame grew, so did his message. He wasn't just playing funny tunes on a spreadsheet, he was showing the world that work didn't have to be a soul-crushing bore. He became a sought-after speaker, invited to share his story and insights at conferences and corporate events around the world. He spoke about the transformative power of humor, how it could boost morale, increase productivity and foster creativity. He emphasized the importance of finding joy in the everyday, of looking for the absurd in the mundane. He urged his audiences to embrace their inner child, to not be afraid to be silly, to find the humor in their work and in their lives. His message resonated with people from all walks of life. CEOs laughed alongside janitors, lawyers alongside artists. Barry's story transcended industries and demographics. It was a reminder that we all crave joy, that we all have the capacity for creativity, and that sometimes all it takes is a little bit of laughter to unlock our full potential. Barry's presentations were more than just lectures. They were interactive experiences. He encouraged audience participation, leading them in laughter yoga exercises, teaching them how to tell jokes, and challenging them to find the humor in their own work experiences. His infectious enthusiasm and genuine passion for spreading joy were contagious. People left his presentations feeling energized, inspired, and ready to inject a little bit of laughter into their own lives. Section six, the boss man cometh from reprimand to recognition. Remember Barry's boss, the one who used to scowl at him over his cubicle wall? He was not amused by Barry's newfound fame. In fact, he saw it as a disruption a threat to the established order of their corporate ecosystem. This is an office, not a circus, he'd bellow, his face turning a delightful shade of puce. He threatened Barry with disciplinary action, citing everything from unprofessional conduct to excessive merriment. However, even the boss man couldn't ignore the positive changes sweeping through the office. Productivity was up, employee morale was through the roof, people were actually smiling and engaging with each other. The office, once a place of quiet desperation, was now buzzing with energy and creativity. The company's bottom line even saw a significant boost, much to the delight of the board of directors. One day, the boss summoned Barry to his office. Barry entered, bracing himself for another lecture on the importance of decorum and the evils of excessive spreadsheet serenading. Instead, he was met with a sight that nearly made him fall out of his chair. The boss, the very same man who had threatened to fire him for his antics, was watching a replay of Barry's Ellen Show appearance. A wide grin plastered across his face. Barry, the boss began, his voice uncharacteristically warm. I owe you an apology. I was wrong. You've not only brought joy to this office, but you've also shown us all that there's always a different way of looking at things. You've taught us that success doesn't have to come at the expense of happiness. In fact, the two can go hand in hand. Section seven, a new venture turning passion into profit. Barry's newfound success opened doors he never thought possible. He quit his accounting job with a rousing spreadsheet symphony farewell performance, of course, and decided to dedicate his life to spreading laughter and inspiring others. He started his own company, The Laughter Legacy, which offered workshops, seminars, and keynote speeches on the transformative power of humor in the workplace. He traveled the world, sharing his story and his message with audiences of all sizes. He spoke at Fortune 500 companies, small businesses, schools, and even a gathering of astrophysicists who, it turns out, have a surprisingly good sense of humor. His workshops were interactive and engaging, filled with laughter, games, and practical tips for incorporating humor into everyday life. Barry developed a series of unique and highly effective programs, each tailored to different needs and audiences. He had workshops for stressed out executives, burned out teachers, and even a special program for teenagers struggling to find their place in the world. His methods were unconventional, but they worked. He used a blend of humor, storytelling, and practical exercises to help people tap into their creativity, unlock their potential, and find joy in unexpected places. His company flourished, becoming a global phenomenon. He had offices in major cities around the world and a team of talented individuals who shared his passion for spreading laughter and positivity. He even published a best-selling book, The Spreadsheet Symphony, Finding Harmony in the Humor of Life, which became a Bible for anyone looking to inject a little bit of joy into their work and their lives. Section eight, the power of play unleashing creativity and innovation. 
One of the key messages Barry emphasised was the importance of play. We're so busy being adults, he'd say, that we forget how to play, how to be silly, how to see the world through the eyes of a child. He argued that play wasn't just for kids, it was an essential ingredient for creativity, innovation and overall well-being. He encouraged his audiences to incorporate play into their workday. He'd organise impromptu office Olympics complete with paper airplane contests and desk chair races. He'd lead brainstorming sessions where the only rule was no idea is a bad idea, encouraging people to think outside the box and embrace their inner child. The results were astounding. Teams that had once struggled to communicate were now collaborating effectively. Their meetings filled with laughter and a renewed sense of camaraderie. Ideas that had once been dismissed as too outlandish were now being explored with enthusiasm and a sense of playful curiosity. The workplace was transformed from a place of drudgery into a hub of creativity and innovation. Barry's message about the power of play resonated far beyond the corporate world. Schools implemented his techniques to create more engaging learning environments. Hospitals incorporated humour and play into their patient care, finding that it helped to reduce stress and promote healing. Even prisons began to adopt Barry's methods, discovering that laughter and play could foster rehabilitation and reduce recidivism rates. Section 9 from Boredom to Billions, a humorous take on success. Barry's journey from bored accountant to global inspiration wasn't without its share of irony. He'd stumbled into success by doing the very thing most people are told to avoid in the workplace, being silly. He'd turned the conventional notion of success on its head, proving that sometimes the path to greatness lies in embracing the absurd. He became a billionaire, but not in the way one might expect. He wasn't driven by profits or material possessions. His wealth came from the joy he brought to others, from the smiles he inspired, from the countless lives he touched with his message of laughter and positivity. He measured his success not in dollars and cents, but in the number of people whose lives he'd transformed. He became a celebrity, but not in the traditional sense. He wasn't followed by paparazzi or hounded for autographs. People recognized him on the street, not because of his fame, but because of the joy he radiated. They'd stop him, not to ask for a selfie, but to share their own stories of how his message had impacted their lives. He received countless awards and accolades, but the ones he cherished most were the handwritten notes from people all over the world, thanking him for showing them that it's okay to laugh, that it's okay to be silly, that it's okay to find joy in the everyday. Those were the true markers of his success, the tangible evidence that his message had resonated, that he'd made a difference in the world. Section 10, inspiring a movement, the global impact of finding joy in work. Barry's message spread like wildfire, igniting a global movement. People from all walks of life, inspired by his story, began to embrace the transformative power of humor and play. Offices around the world transformed into spaces where laughter was encouraged, where creativity flourished, and where people looked forward to coming to work each day. Schools incorporated Barry's principles into their curriculum, teaching children the importance of creativity, collaboration, and finding joy in learning. The next generation was being raised with the belief that work could be fulfilling, that success didn't have to come at the expense of happiness, and that laughter was a powerful tool for positive change. The movement transcended borders and cultures. From the bustling streets of Tokyo to the remote villages of the Himalayas, people were embracing the idea that life was too short to be bored, that happiness was a choice, and that laughter was a universal language that could unite us all. The world was changing, one laugh at a time. The impact of Barry's message was undeniable. The global happiness index soared, stress levels plummeted, productivity skyrocketed. The world had become a brighter, more joyful place and it was all thanks to a bored accountant who dared to find the humor in his spreadsheets. Section 11, the legacy of laughter. A world transformed by humor. Years later, Barry's legacy lived on the world had fully embraced the transformative power of humour and play. The workplace was no longer a place to dread, but a space to thrive, a breeding ground for creativity, innovation and genuine human connection. The lines between work and play had blurred, creating a world where people could pursue their passions with enthusiasm and joy. The education system had undergone a complete overhaul, 
rote learning and standardised testing were replaced with experiential learning, collaborative projects and a focus on nurturing each child's unique talents and passions. Children were taught to embrace their curiosity, to think outside the box and to never lose sight of the importance of play. The healthcare industry had also undergone a radical transformation. Hospitals were no longer sterile and intimidating places, but warm and welcoming environments that prioritised patient well-being. Laughter therapy was now a standard part of patient care, and hospitals were filled with the sounds of music, laughter and playful interactions. Barry's message had permeated every aspect of society, creating a world where people were encouraged to live their lives to the fullest, to pursue their passions with gusto, and to never underestimate the power of a good laugh. The world had become a more joyful, more creative and more fulfilling place and it was all thanks to the legacy of laughter that Barry had sparked. Section 12, your turn unlocking your potential through joy. What started with a simple desire to escape the monotony of spreadsheets had blossomed into a global movement, transforming the world into a more joyful, more creative and more fulfilling place. Barry's story is a powerful reminder that we all have the power to change the world one laugh at a time. So, the next time you find yourself bogged down in the daily grind, remember Barry. Remember the power of humour, the importance of play and the transformative potential of finding joy in the unexpected. Embrace your inner child, unleash your creativity and don't be afraid to laugh at yourself along the way. The world is waiting for your unique brand of genius, your own quirky humour, your own infectious laughter. Go out there and make it laugh, make it think, make it a better place, one smile at a time, your journey starts now.